my clock says six o'clock. And so I'm gonna call um, a regular meeting to order. And I'm gonna try to navigate to my agenda, which is somewhere over here. Um, so first up is set adjust agenda. Do we have changes we need to make? Do we need to put an item in um, for that uh, Sean's email earlier this afternoon about, oh, about the property? Property sale? <clears throat> yeah, the O'Brien's. Can we take action if we don't have an item? We can, but we can throw it in there as an item. It, it'll be pretty quick because we've already authorized him to go ahead. So yeah. Okay. Do you want to tack that um, on as, as an item eight? Yeah. Thank you for doing that, everybody. Anything else? That any other changes, additions, subtractions? Yeah, Eric, we have a, a approval of a statement for the equity committee. That could be, I guess, number nine. It shouldn't take too long. It's in the board, it should be in the board folder. Yeah, saw it in there. Okay, anything else? Could somebody make a motion to adjust the agenda to add an uh, item eight and nine as stated? So moved. I can second that. All right. Um, all in favor of the uh, adjusted agenda, please say aye. 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 All right. So that's everyone, I think. So, or that's four, the four of us who are here. Um, so motion carries. Next is to um, have any communication from the audience. I don't know. Is anybody? We're a little light on audience tonight, but going once. All right, we're gonna roll on to um, uh, time to approve minutes from last time, which was April 1st. Um, I thought, nice job on the minutes. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. A second from Michael. So any discussion on the minutes? All in favor, please say aye. All right. Aye. Aye. All right. I get all four of us saying aye. So motion carries. Um, oh, shoot. I did those in different, the wrong order, right? It, oh, well, we got them both. Um, next is town manager's report. Sean Fielder, go ahead. Hey, uh, I just want a reminder for everybody that this next week we're going to be doing a complete public water system flush. Uh, it's planning to be started next Monday going through the week. We have been advertising this ongoing. Uh, Hardwick is at a uh, town website, Front Porch Forum. So there might be instances of uh, low pressure and or cloudy water. So uh, if you experience a cloudy water situation, what we would recommend is just go ahead and run the tap, uh, cold tap for uh, five to 10 minutes and hopefully that should resolve the issue. Uh, I am aware we had some cloudy water problems um, the Saturday before Easter weekend, and we have figured out that was in relation to some fire department training activities. So sorry, folks, that caused the problem on Easter weekend. Uh, we kind of did figure out this cause. Honestly, we're hoping that may have uh, done a little bit of flush for us, so it maybe prevents us from seeing uh, problems, you know, this coming week in regards to the dirty water. It's not uncommon in a flushing procedure to have this happen. We have to do the flush for regular preventative maintenance. We were not able to do a flush last fall because of drought conditions, so um, we're going to be getting back on the schedule of doing the flushing procedure about every six-month period. Uh, on water system issues, we have received an update that there is going to be another round of the Vermont COVID-19 arrearage assistance program. Uh, there was an initial offering maybe three, two, three months back now. We're trying to get more information on this. Um, I know there was some opportunities for uh, electric bills, but I'm specifically referencing water and sewer bills. As soon as the town gets more information on this, we will be putting it up on our website. So, uh, you know, there's an opportunity there if you were having trouble keeping up with your bill because of, uh, as caused by COVID, uh, um, 
issues, if you will, then uh, there'd be an opportunity there for you. Today, we had a 60% uh, wastewater treatment facility design update meeting that was with our engineers uh, as leads. That's Aldrich and Elliot. Everything's in order at this phase. We, um, we are uh, just continuing to move ahead with the designs uh, so that the uh, objective there is starting up construction uh, this season. And again, I think everybody's advised this is for the basically the 50 year uh, improvement to the wastewater treatment facility. Um, just for some regular processing that on, uh, is ongoing for a town manager did process our monthly water operations report. Also did our, we do a wastewater monthly report. So keep it on top of those items, of course. We do have a water contractor on site now at our well house down off Wilka Street. So we're doing work on the rehabilitation work, which is once every five years where uh, they had started this uh, turn of the new year. And because of some supply chain issues and scheduling as caused by COVID, they had to do a hold on um, doing the improvements to well number two. So now we're uh, kicking off the improvements for well number two. Everything's in order um, on these processes. So we're in good shape and uh, getting good feedback from the contractors in regards to uh, how this is improving on, uh, you know, keeping that clean, if you will, and helping on the production at the uh, well locations. So uh, just reporting on that. Um, we've been uh, somewhat busy just giving some recent grant awards and also just getting geared up for the summer. Uh, you know, what we have coming at us for our summer instruction season. We've already reported that we had received a recreation grant via Vermont Community Foundation and Vermont Outdoor Recreation Economy Council. That's a guess on the acronym, I think I'm close. And then also everybody's advised, we've gotten uh, the award for the small scale uh, bike and ped grant through VTrans. So uh, just, just a lot happening on uh, just getting prepped for some of the improvements that are gonna be coming through these programs. This week and uh, this last week or so, I've been reviewing information uh, with Tom and looking over information with Jeff and looking over information with Casey. Uh, and, and in particular with Tom looking over just, uh, you know, what we're going to talk about a little bit later tonight in regards to uh, downtown parking, crosswalks related, also discussions in, uh, you know, areas um, that uh, we would be doing crosswalks and other improvements for East Hardwick uh, area as well. So just uh, reporting that. Uh, Tom did confirm with me and he might report on this later, but I'll grab it. We're we're ahead on our summer, if you will, or spring, I'll say it that way. So Tom confirmed, we're gonna go ahead and um, uh, assuming the weather stays warm and uh, reasonable, you know, this last weekend, as an example, downtown was pretty busy with business activity. We're gonna go ahead and get the garbage can set out. We're planned for the end of uh, the middle to end of next week. So that we'll have a place for, um, you know, patrons uh, to put their, put their garbage if they're, uh, you know, visiting restaurants or, you know, whatever it is they need to dispose of. Uh, uh, garbage and uh, recycling. Um, just on the subject of the downtown area, just for the board, remember that last year we made the determination to close off the village parking lot, the entrance, if you were heading southbound, it'd be the entrance on North Main Street directly adjacent to the village restaurant. So when we get into the discussion tonight about improvements downtown, we'll just need some input from the board as far as what your preference is for do we want to do that again this year. And uh, recall we blocked it out and then we had a couple of tables. It's not in the report, but I have confirmed with Claudia Goal that she's intending to have the tables in her park space uh, that she owns with her brother and sister-in-law. And that's the park between um, Positive Pie and the Yummy Walk. And then we would do the same, the town mean to say as last year, we'd have the two tables and chairs in the triangular park directly adjacent to the pedestrian bridge. Um, what I want to just close with is just a little bit of information about we are uh, trying to transition back to a uh, new normal, opening the spigot, as the uh, governor would say. And Alberta at the town clerk's office had released earlier this week that um, they're going to be uh, moving back to allowing more visitors uh, to the clerk's office. There's information up on the website right now and just reading back some information on the clerks and then I'll offer some comments for some of the other offices. Town's clerks, town clerk's office open Monday to Thursday, that's eight to noon and then 1230 to four to allow for um, any business that has to be conducted. 
uh, land records room use would be uh, continued to be by appointment only. Um, and in order to, uh, you know, get back into a, uh, it's not a full fledged reopen, we're trying to stage this up. Um, just so, you know, so everybody is keeping track or our numbers are coming down, but the incidence of coronavirus are still something that we should be concerned about. We need to continue to be diligent. So in order to reopen, we'd be following strict guidelines for entrance into Memorial Building, masks are required, and that would be regardless of your vaccination status. CDC is recommending even if you have been vaccinated, you should be uh, continuing to wear a mask. So we're gonna ask people to be doing that. Obviously, social distancing is required. No more than two customers allowed in the clerk's office at one time. And as has been said right along, those experiencing any symptoms of coronavirus would not be allowed in the building. Town manager's office is planning to allow visitors into our office space on a limited basis. Also starting next Monday, we'll still be requesting business be conducted by phone or email if possible. And for listers and zoning offices, continue to be uh, doing business on an appointment basis, and you can schedule appointments with those offices direct. Um, no unannounced appointments, please. Certain offices don't necessarily have the uh, square footage and or uh, good barriers, if you will. So we're just, uh, honestly, we're trying to protect our employees, keep our business going, but also ensure our visitors are protected uh, for the good of the community. So I you know, hope everybody understands our tactics are to not fully go back to you know, wide open at this time. It's not quite time to be doing that. We have to wait for things to settle down additionally. So, um, you know, it goes without saying the town will continue to monitor, town offices will continue to monitor state guidance, COVID-19 case numbers, uh, will keep option open to adjust off office operations if and as needed moving forward. And as I've said right along, please continue to practice recommended social distancing guidance and please do consider obtaining your vaccination when you're eligible to do so. That's what I have for the report this evening. Thank you. People have questions for Sean. Sean, I just have a really quick question about the water. Um, we talked about this a little bit last summer, but we talked about, um, I think Eric brought up an additional reserve because the drought was so bad. We didn't lose any water, but I'm just wondering, um, I'm just wondering if we've identified that or if there might be, um, yeah, if I know we have Bridgman Hill, um, but if there's a, a another water source that we're thinking about just in case we do have another drought again? Yeah, so um, we are in, we are still in drought actually for a point of clarification. So that's something that obviously we wanna be, uh, hopefully we continue to see a little bit of moisture. It's usually, you know, we need it this time of year. So um, what we, the way we left it and how it will be going moving forward here on this is we're, we're gonna be investigating the springs um, uh, it'd be to the northeast of the Bridgman Reservoir. Um, is it Reno Farm area is the historical reference Reno, area? Reno Road. Yeah, sorry about that. I should have said Reno Road. So that's yep. something that we do have to evaluate. Um, I don't think I've mentioned this in the past, but, uh, you know, there had been a significant amount of study, um, you know, in the areas of the, I'll call it the Lamoille Valley, you know, closer to our existing sources over time, but unfortunately, we just haven't been able to find any reasonable sources uh, similar to what we have right now. So it's something that does have to be, uh, you know, some energy is going to have to be put into this moving forward. We're lucky we've got two good gravel sources, but they are generally pretty close to each other. Um, just one other thought on this, you know, if we face an absolute catastrophic uh, problem with our sources, obviously that'd be a very bad situation. Um, you know, for a catastrophic situation, you know, maybe an alternative is we would use Lamoille and do a surface water treatment approach. That's something that, uh, you know, as an absolute fallback in case something were going on, it, it's an option. It's not preferred as your backup source, but it could be used moving forward. You know, hauling is just something that is not practical for a community of our size. So it, it is something that's going to take some effort and energy moving forward, Kaylee. And we're going to be looking at the Reno Road Springs as our next step. Thanks, John. Uh, for the good of the uh, conversation, um, East Hardwick Fire District 1, I talked to the operator there today and, uh, you know, I just asked him, what are you guys seeing on your sources? We're not aware of any drops in our supply uh, quantity at this phase. 
Uh, and I talked to the operator, uh, Ed Keen today, and he said he hasn't seen anything either at this phase. So we're not, uh, you know, with the information at hand, um, not significantly concerned, but if the drought continues, it's gonna be a problem for all of us. On an unrelated note, um, when I looked at the town website today, I think I only saw an update on the homepage about the town clerk's office opening. Could you verify that includes the town manager's office? Uh, you have it correct, Eric, because I basically did the narrative uh, that I read back here just in advance of the meeting. So we'll do the update um, on the website tomorrow that okay. incorporates what I've just outlined. So appreciate you picking up on that. Thank you. Yep. And then um, uh, uh, we had had a discussion or I don't know, or email discussion, I don't remember, but um, something about so we we were alerted that VTrans is going to be paving the state highways through town in 2022, and the planning it would happen in 2021. And I believe there's a way for the town to engage in that process. Are we um, poised to to engage with VTrans on that? Yes. How's that for an answer? That's a great answer. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Uh, didn't uh, didn't do anything on that, but obviously I'll check into that, Eric. Okay, well, there, make sure. Hey, Tom nothing. and I, well, Tom and I have been having some basic conversations with certain e-trans contacts, but not necessarily specific to okay, the paving's coming in 2022. Let's make sure the town's right at the table, but we will make sure that's taken care of here. And that there was another. Who else was gonna was was it local motion maybe that contacted us about that, and they would. They would join and with a to help us with a complete streets view. That was back in uh, January, February. I think you got the name right, Eric. I gotta check some emails. Okay, just don't want to let it fall through the cracks, and I think it might have implications for our discussion later about downtown streets because those are uh, eight highways as well. All right. And I, I just have one thing that we maybe want to talk about when we talk about downtown as well, but, you know, we still have that looming issue with uh, no public toilets, no public bathrooms in downtown. Um, you know, in, I, apparently there's a, there is a bathroom in the Hardwick Inn building, but that's not necessarily always accessible. So um, I'd just like to see us at some point, we can't figure it out tonight, but summer is coming and um, it would be nice to, to start looking at whether or not we could have a, you know, whatever those things are, porta potty or whatever, figure out what that would cost us and whether we could provide it, especially if we're going to see more people based on the trail and stuff like that. Duly noted. All right. Next up is a road foreman's report. Tom Fadden is with us. Where are you? You're, he's on mute, but he's coming off mute to give us a report. I hope. Tom, you're on mute. How's uh, that? Can you hear me? Better. Okie dokie. So in other words, uh, we've got probably about 90% of our roads uh, turned over and graded once so far. Uh, there is still areas that we're dealing with with a little bit of uh, soft spots and stuff. One there we fixed uh, yesterday was out on Dutton Road there up by the Apple Orchard. Uh, besides that, the other ones that are still in the wood, they're still sweating a little bit. Uh, I think for the main part of our roads, I think we have Wapanaki, uh, Dimmick Road, and I believe Bailey Hazen Road left that are all, you know, the main corridor, I guess you would call them. And then we have a bunch of like small side roads that go to like one person house or two that we have left. Uh, besides that, we did haul some more material in and we've been hauling it back out again. Uh, we do have uh, all the areas covered back up that we did put stone in earlier. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, we did go down to the two, uh, to the uh, pump house uh, down on the back side of Buffalo Street there. Uh, we had to pull those pumps out because they were clogging up and kicking the breaker off for the sewer. So we pulled those out and had to clean them. And of course, downtown, you can see we started our, our parking spaces there, the ones that we figured there that uh, weren't gonna lose any on. 
so we did that. The banners are up. Speed bumps are in. Uh, next week, hopefully, we'll, with this little bit of moisture and stuff, we'll get back to back to sweeping with our cool cat. Uh, we'll get to head towards Greensboro Bend and get that cleaned up. Street sweeper is coming in at the end of the month now instead of later, uh, Casey was telling me. Uh, so that should be here in a couple weeks. So we can buzz around town with that. Uh, pretty much that's about it, I guess. Uh, sounds good. Questions for Tom? Tom, thank you. This sounds like you guys are plenty busy. Well, we're trying to. Yeah, that's good. Thanks for, thanks. Uh, all right, next up is the Hardwick Police Department report given by Aaron Cochran, who's also here on the phone. Chief Cochran, go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, just recently, uh, actually yesterday, I guess, we did uh, uh, receive word that we did get awarded um, a little over $10,000 for uh, the Governor's Highway Safety Program. Uh, to allow increased response uh, to distracted driving and drunken drug driving. Um, we had been participating in that for the past several years and then they changed their funding and we weren't able to get funding uh, for the last two years. Officer Janess has worked on this and was persistent. Originally, we weren't going to get any. Um, he was persistent with them and we are now going to get uh, a little over 10,000 for that uh, grant award. Uh, so that's good. Puts more uh, more officers you know, on the road looking for those particular things during special, uh, specialized details. Um, Sherry had uh, mentioned at the last meeting about open burning, et cetera. Um, we did some extensive research on that. I know um, we had sent um, the information we, we received to Sherry especially. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna look for Sherry to, to jump in here and see where we're planning on going with this or what, what we wanna do uh, well, with this. And I'm, I'm happy to jump in. Um, I did go ahead, since you said I could, I went ahead and pursued um, getting the, the model ordinance and information from the Judicial Bureau, um, and that has not been received yet, but um, it was really good information that uh, Leho found with the, you know, how, how it, you know, what the lineup of people that can enforce it is, but it would, I right. think it would still be very helpful to just like make that clear with a with an actual ordinance that says that it's the police that are going to enforce it um you know yeah town health officers local fire warden fire you know so i think we'll uh, hopefully at a future meeting when i have that information in place i'll i'll get it on the agenda so we can um hash it out a little further that's my plan anyway. sounds sounds good to me Okay. I think in the past, what has happened is, and I had mentioned that in the email, I think in the past, you know, the call has gone out, depending on the dispatcher, to um, whoever the dispatcher thought was the right person to call. Um, I know yeah. we've been to some. I know the forest fire warden has been to some. I'm sure Tom has probably been to some. So yeah. uh, I, I think making it clear, um, then we can make it clear to our dispatching as well, you know, how this yeah. goes forward and how it's handled. So yeah, that's yeah. clear for everybody including yeah, us it, yeah it just seems like that's a more efficient way to deal with it and then also you know the citations can be written and stuff like that but that's not going to happen if it's you know the town health officer uh, you know so having an actual well they yeah and they actually can anybody any one of those those people listed actually can get a number uh to actually issue that ticket yeah but you know they're not gonna I mean, it hasn't happened yet. No, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, as a deputy yeah. health officer, I would defer to my police department to issue a ticket with right. a state number right. on it. That's it just for the logistics, like that's right? what people would do. Yeah. So we, we can pursue it. Uh, I'll, be, I'll, get, I'll be in touch when I have the actual info. Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, no, that sounds good. Um, the next thing that I have is um, ATV use on LVRT uh, on the rail trail. Um, just, you know, we, we had a complaint or some discussion. Um, somebody who had witnessed ATVs on the, on the rail trail and just a reminder that that is prohibited on the rail trail. Um, anybody, you know, witnessing that should report it to the police department. Um, the reasonable expectation obviously has to be our understood our limitations on being able to control the rail trail at this point in time. But, uh, you know, we will we'll handle it as we can uh, and it definitely should be reported to us. They see that that ATV use. Okay. Um, Aaron, can I? The, uh, Aaron, can I just offer uh, just just a clarifying statement? Um, sure. There is one exception to the rule in the short term, and that would be from the Wright Fern parking lot. Um, you know, heading on the trail as you approach uh, Cape Brook Farm, that's a section that uh, is uh, is uh, allowed via the ordinance, but that could be changing in the future. So just, you know, there's a little bit of an exception to the rule, uh, but for these newer sections that the town has been assisting and the state will be working on, uh, just one other data point, we have been in contact with VAST. Uh, they're assisting us with getting the signage out that does show no ATVs, you know, as a reminder to folks, you know, you, you shouldn't be on these sections with your ATV. That's it, Aaron. Okay. Um, also, we have uh, Saturday, April 24th, we have the uh, drug take back that we do uh, biannually. Um, so that'll be going on at the police department if anybody has uh, prescription drugs that they uh, need to get rid of. Uh, just a reminder again, we don't take sharps or liquids, it's pills only. Uh, we've seen everything from needles to liquids to patches to you name it, um, but it is a pills only uh, that, that we take back and, and get rid of, but that, that is Saturday, April 24th, uh, going on around the state. Um, let's see. Um, and then the let's see, incident reports, we had talked about them last month. Does, did anybody from the board have, um, you know, any suggestion on reports that they found useful or that we could get to you for the next meet, you know, next meeting, things like that. I really liked, um, the, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't reply. I did look when you sent it, and I think it was okay. a, I think it was a second one. Uh, there was a summary. Any, anyway, yeah, I'll reply to you with, with what I thought. Um, okay, I liked. I'm sorry, I, I didn't yet. <laughs> That's all right. Just to give us some direction as to what you know, what you would like to see. Um, yeah, but I'm yeah. I thought that the one of them. I think it was the second one, but I'll go back and look again. But. One of them, especially, okay. I like seeing the summary data. It's fine to continue to see the whole incident report, but the summary data is look with it would be really helpful for me. Okay. Um, and the last thing that I have is came to mind um, is Caspian Beach. Um, we've worked a lot over the past several years. Originally, we were having issues with um, you know underage drinking there. Uh, we did have a fatal car crash of somebody who had left there, uh, multiple incidents with squealing tires, et cetera, uh, does shut down at 11. And, you know, so with a change in services in Greensboro, just we do own property in Greensboro, obviously, uh, the town, you know, the town does. And so that's something we want to keep in mind to make sure that that um, is being maintained as far as being patrolled and keeping, um, you know, illegal activity down. Uh, it is a no alcohol beach as well uh, due to the the incidents that uh, were going on up there. So, um, you know, I just want to bring that to the forefront, something we do need to think about and making sure that that is uh, patrolled in the, in the future. And other than that, that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Does anybody have questions for Aaron? Aaron, I just have a really quick question about what you just said, just sure. to understand. So even after July 1, because we own that beach, we'll still be patrolling it. Is that what I understand? We will not. Okay, so that will be, Greensboro will be 
patrolling the beach. Right. So my, you know, my concern is just over the, to make sure that um, we're still not having, because it is our beach and it's basically our liability, the town's liability um, for that beach. Um, we want to make sure that it is still being patrolled and, you know, no underage drinking, alcohol, et cetera, is problems coming out of that beach. So that's something we're going to want to keep an eye on, I think, as, as a town and, and make sure that things are going smoothly up there as they have for the past several years since we instituted uh, some of the changes there. So is this a, a change that, um, Aaron, that you and Sean have agreed on to not patrol up there anymore at the beach? No, we just wouldn't. It's in Greensboro, so it's not something we would, you know, as as they have changed services, it's not, we wouldn't go into Greensboro, um, even though it's our town property, so. Uh, okay. You could, right? We can. Yeah. Okay. Just asking. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I certainly have concerns still. Yeah. All right. Um, any the, other questions? The only other Aaron? thing, the only other thing, Eric, that I have is something just recently came up that I may have to bow out. So I'm just wondering if we can move up the um, part-time officer. Oh. Because I may need to bow out of this meeting. Something emergency just came up that I may have to bow out for. Uh. Yes, um, I'm happy to do that now if that's okay with the rest of the board. Absolutely. Yeah, Jerry. Yeah, Kaylee's good. All right. Yeah, unless he does. Does the chief have to be here first to just go ahead and do that on the agenda? I mean, we can do it now, I guess. Yeah, we can do it now. Let's unless, it now. unless you need more information or, or whatever, it doesn't. I'm good. Um, we can bump that up. Um, sorry, where is that one? Item three. Item three. And I'm sorry, I'm going to have to scroll over to find the police officer. So, all right. So, um, it's a police officer appointment and, uh, it reads know all persons, but these presents that we, the undersigned select persons and town manager of the town of Hardwick, Vermont, hereby appoint Zachary Willey, police officer for said town under Title 24, Section 1931 VSA, with all the powers granted under this section and Title 24, Section 1935 VSA. Um, and it's starting April 15th and going till further notice. Um, so as stated before in our last meeting, uh, uh, Zach, Zachary Willie was uh, interviewed and Aaron's done extensive background check as part of their normal checks. Um, anybody have any questions or discussions? I just wonder, is he coming? Uh, is he a new officer, brand new, or is he coming from a previous uh, place? Or? Yeah, he's been, um, he's been part-time with Caledonia County Sheriff's Department for about a year. Okay. Um, so he, he's not new, but he is. Uh, you know, a, a year into it, but, um, and he's, he's continuing to work for them part-time as well. Um, it is, you know, just a part-time position as needed. Um, so he would still work for them part-time as well, but yeah, he, he, um, he has, uh, worked for about a year, um, as a part-time police officer. Does he live in the area? He lives in Lineville, in the Lineville area. Okay, cool. Any other questions for Aaron about um, Zachary Willie? Planning as a um, part-time officer. Uh, does somebody wanna um, make a motion that we make the appointment? I'd like to move that we make the appointment as per Chief Cochran's recommendation. We have seconds. And I do too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. We got one, two, three. Aye. 
Thank you, that's four. So that's all of us who are here. Thank you, Aaron. We'll have to get yeah, signatures. Thank you. We'll have to get signatures of everybody. We'll have to just coordinate that on the hard copy item. Yeah, I can stop in tomorrow and do that too, Sean. Very good, I'll do the same, obviously. So that they'll be in your office, Sean, for signatures. Yeah, we'll have it at the manager's right. office, and um, you know, Great. just reach out. Uh, you know, anytime between seven thirty and three thirty, generally uh, we're accessible. Yeah. So, just uh, nudge us if we don't remember to stop. No worries. <laughs> All right, thanks, Aaron. Um, yeah, thank up, you. All right, next up is Hardwick Electric Department report, and we have Nat Smith here. So, Nat, do you want to give us the rundown on what's happening over at yep. HED? Okay. Uh, thanks, Eric. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. I've had trouble with this. <clears throat> so, I'm going to uh, just read a short report. Yep. Hardwick Electric is in excellent financial shape. Revenues are up. Expenses are down. Even though we are carrying about $150,000 in pandemic-related uncollected revenues, <clears throat> we've put off some capital projects to help in that. Very few outages this winter. Obviously, the winter was mild. The H11 solar project on Billings Road should be generating electricity by late summer. We're also looking into the possibility of some stored energy projects. The Walcott Hydro has been running really well, generating over a million kilowatt hours since the beginning of this year, just the last three or four months. This summer, we will be refurbishing the Surge Tower Foundation that supports about 500,000 pounds of water. And later in the fall, we'll be working on replacing the sluice gate in the dam itself. And I have no idea how you can possibly do that with water running over it. On the hydro front, we received an additional allotment of Niagara Mohawk power, thereby pushing our total hydro percentage up to about 25%. That coupled with the 36% of our power that is nuclear and the 29% that is Landfill gas, wood chip, and solar means we are really doing extremely well on the renewable front. So that's it. If there are any questions, be glad to try to answer them. Um, no, I have a. I do have. I think this is maybe not the forum. I have a question about demand charges for EV charging, but I'll address that separately to Mike. Yep. Uh, you can't catch him for a while. He's off to the Caribbean again. Uh, okay. Fair enough. Thank you, Nat. Does anybody else have questions for Nat? Thank you, Eric. Okay. All right. Bye -bye. Thanks a lot. Yep. We're going to roll along um, to item one, which is the a downtown designation um, report or presentation, I guess, right? Um, by um, Brian Holloway, right? He was Gary, here. Gary Holloway. He's Gary Holloway. Yeah, I saw him. He's here. I saw he, him too. He just left. Oh. He fell off. Internet. I'll check my email. Maybe his internet dropped. We have, we have that effect on people, I guess. <laughs> um what's after that next after that would be downtown walkways and parking spaces seems like that would be better to do in gary's, gary's coming back in okay. gary's here on, I, I need to gary can you hear us yeah i can hear you sorry i um come on here excuse me just yeah. a second no there we go Sorry, my uh, internet just kicked off right when it was my turn. I, I find that really hard to believe these days, Gary. <laughs> Thanks for being with us, Gary. Yeah, the yeah, floor is yours, Gary. Oh, okay, great. Um, hello, all. Um, glad to be here. Uh, my name is Gary Holloway. I work uh, in the Community Planning and Revitalization Division of the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Um, it's been a while since I've been up to Hardwick uh, for business, uh, but I have, you know, um, spent some time up in Hardwick um, working with some of you all over the past uh, six or seven years. Um, really excited when um, Sean reached out to me um, several months ago to kind of 
start talking a little bit about the possibility of Hardwick um, moving on to downtown designation from the current village designation that you all have. Uh, when I first started my job uh, back in 2014, I know I was in contact with Sherry and some others from the town following the Vermont Council on Rural Development uh, community visit process, um, where you all had appointed a commission, downtown commission, to kind of focus on revitalization uh, initiatives for the downtown area. So I, I think this program could be a good fit for Hardwick. We've thought that for, for several years. And I, I was asked here tonight just to provide a brief overview of uh, what that means, what the downtown designation program means. Um, and, and how that changes some of your benefits from village designation. I, I did provide an, uh, um, an overview uh, presentation that I, I had done um, with Sean and Sh Sherry and uh, Jeff and Kristen and others uh, just to kind of get more in depth, but I'm not gonna have time to do that tonight. So I'm happy to answer some questions tonight after I do a brief overview and then I'm happy to come back and um, you know, uh, you can poke me one-on-one -on -one or I can come back and get more detail. Um, so essentially, um, you know, we, we have different designation programs at the state and currently Hardwick has village designation, which allows them to have certain benefits such as the historic state tax credit um, benefit. And downtown designation adds on some additional benefits to that program. I think one, one of the more popular benefits that we offer is a downtown transportation fund. These are uh, grants up to $100,000 that the municipality can apply to annually. And they're not competing with every town in the state for these grants. They're only competing against the 23 other designated downtown communities across the state. Um, there is a one-to-one -one match on those grants, but these, these are state-funded um, grants that allow you to do uh, streetscape improvements, sidewalk extensions, lighting, wayfinding, signage, um, safety enhancements, variety of different things. So that's a great, really big carrot for the program. Um, yeah, Eric. Can I ask a question about that? Yeah. Is that, um, so is that actually state money so it could be used as match against federal money? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it comes through VTRANS and then to our agency and we administer yep. it. Um, okay. So it's state. Uh, VTrans has both state and federal money, um, yeah. like their small scale project money out of the bike pedestrian program is state money as well. So this is kind of an extension of that um, that we use for our designated downtown. So yeah, you, you can use local match, federal match, uh, private money that you've raised, anything but state money you can use for match. And how much, how much is um, awarded annually total? It varies. Like this year we have $500,000. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a one-time $100,000 increase um, last year. So typically it's about $400,000. Um, we do have a legislative proposal that's being considered. It passed the House um, and it's on the Senate side right now for a one-time $5 million bump for the program. Um, so we could um, really help some of our communities realize some pent-up demand on transportation projects. Um, and I, I will emphasize that these transportation projects are are for the downtown within the designated downtown or serving directly serving the downtown area. So it can't be like a street project, um, you know, way on the outskirts of town necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other benefits, I'm not gonna have time to go in great detail, but uh, we, we have a program called sales tax reallocation program, which uses um, the tax on construction material for larger Kind of newer construction projects in the downtown um, that can uh, it's through the tax credit program i'm not going to go into detail on that but that's a bonus uh, and then there's some act 250 relief in a variety of different areas around uh, mixed income housing and uh, mixed use projects uh, and that there's caps on permitting fees and there's land gains exemptions and, and, and several other kind of categories you'll see kind of on a spreadsheet that i have um, with different benefits around that um, you'll continue to get priority consideration in other state grants like you do for, for Village Center, uh, but some of the grant programs you'll get additional bonus points for having the downtown, um, like the municipal planning grants, for example. Um, we do have kind of a traffic calming stipulation that will allow you to lower your speed limit less than 25 miles an hour. Um, uh, hmm. But really? that is, that is a, I will flag that by saying, 
um, you know, VTrans will require you to do kind of a traffic study to, to demonstrate that 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 is uh, that particular area of road within your downtown is 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 justifiably um, able to go less than 25. And we haven't really seen any communities in Vermont um, successfully um, utilize that benefit yet. But that that is kind of it's in there. It's in the mix. Um, and since I know my time's limited, I'm going to move on to some of the like what 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 are you on the hook for, and what's the process for doing this? Um, mm -hmm. It's what I'll say is that there, there's a bit of there's a little bit of work to do to get um, the application together, right? Um, someone from the town. It's a, it's an application from the town, uh, so someone's going to have to work put time on that. And I've gone through that in detail with Sherry and Sean and Jeff, um, so they they understand and. The town is meeting a lot of the check boxes in those requirements, um, but there's some other pieces that might take a little bit more time. Um, one of the requirements we have is that you actually have a separate entity, uh, a separate uh, downtown commission or a separate downtown organization that is working in conjunction with the town on downtown revitalization work. So they they have their own, um, you know, kind of authority, so to speak. Um, and working collaboratively with the town. So in the past, you all had appointed um, a commission and that was a start. Um, and that may be what may be the easiest step to do in the short term if you decide to move forward is to appoint a board commission for a, for a period of time. And then maybe that graduates into a nonprofit organization uh, that has its own board, for example. Um, so that is a kind of a requirement that you have that, that function in there. Yeah, and that has to be a, its own nonprofit. It it has to either be a an appointed commission. Oh, okay. Um, and that would be a way to get started, and I think that's totally acceptable. I imagine that if if you started out that way, and and, and after you know a, a couple of years, I mean, you may want to kind of transition that into a nonprofit status, so you can get eligibility for additional grants that otherwise you may not have the ability to tap into without having that nonprofit status. So. Once again, that's something I can go into more detail um, later. Um, but I, I think setting up a commission in the short term could maybe help with you know the application itself. Um, it could also help um, start to realize some of the you know some of the goals and build the strategic plan because uh, our application will actually require there to be some kind of a strategic plan over five years on. Um, you know what is this? What is this designation going to do for Hardwick? Uh, Hardwick's downtown, and you may say, you know, it's going to help us to attract track businesses and vacancies. It may help us with bike ped connections. It might help us with um, safety improvements, and 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 so you're kind of outlining some of those goals specifically to the downtown area as part of the application process. If that makes sense. Did someone have a question? No, not yet. Okay, um, I'm going to keep moving. Um, one other kind of requirement from the town as part of this is that there's some kind of financial financial con contribution. We don't dictate a dollar amount, um, but we just know, uh, you know, over over time working with downtown organizations or commissions that they need some kind of funding to help with the work that they're doing. And so I'll just kind of flag that as, you know, the town will have to decide that there's a little bit of money that's going towards the work um, to be undertaken um, um, kind of realize some of your community goals. Um, and then once you're, um, so as far as the application process, you know, we, we did the first step and we, we um, kind of provided an update, or, uh, you know, information around the program um, and then putting the application together. And I'm, you know, happy to kind of work with the town as we go through that process, uh, if you so choose to do that. The select board will have to, at some point, if you decide this is the route you go, you'll have to formally have a resolution saying that we approve this application process, um, notifying the RPC and RD RDC, uh, Regional Development Corporations, that you're going to apply for this. Um, and then uh, how it works is you, you, you present that application to me. Um, I review it if I see anything that's missing or any adjustments, I work with you on that and try to set you up for a successful application that will event eventually be reviewed by the downtown development board that meets on the fourth Monday of each month. 
Uh, and that board is the is the board that oversees all our designation programs, um, all of our tax credit awards, our downtown transportation awards, and a variety of other things. Um, so it can it can take a matter of uh, of months, and uh, sometimes it takes a, a bit longer depending on how ambitious the town is on on getting all the pieces of the application together. Um, but initial initial glance and look through the requirements, Hardwick is uh, well on its way to meeting many of the requirements. Um, so it's it's not as, as big of a lift as some other communities that we've worked with. Um, so once again, as far as your, what you're on the hook for, it's a bit of work to get this application in. If approved and you become a downtown designation, uh, every eight years you'll have to revisit and resubmit an application to the state. So that's one thing to keep in mind as far as a requirement. Every four years, we do an official check-in, which is really just a meeting with me to kind of see how things are going. And I report that back to the board. Um, annually, we, we collect something called reinvestment statistics. And that is really just kind of a snapshot of um, what's happened over the past year. Um, how many businesses have you gained and lost? How many jobs have you gained and lost? Uh, how much uh, public or private investment has gone into properties or streetscape projects, things like that. You know, it's not a huge lift. It's just a, you know, a few page report that you turn in. Um, we do provide a lot of trainings. Uh, and then we just ask that a representative from the downtown commission or organization and, um, or the town uh, participate in these, um, you know, a few times a year trainings that we have. Uh, whether it's a downtown um, and historic preservation conference that we offer, or whether it's an advocacy day at the state house, or a um, a specific uh, we have we have annual retreats. I, I meet with the 23 designated downtowns on a, every two weeks. We have a meeting, um, and we and these are option these are optional meetings. But during COVID, at one point, we we're meeting weekly, and it's been really helpful for our downtowns to kind of have that relationship with other communities so they know what's you know what's going on around the state how does that apply to what we're doing in our community uh, and it just gives you additional resources quite frankly so really that's the and just the other requirement is that you just meet the general criteria that's established when you're applying for designation um, you know other than that it's really an opt-in program um, we don't you know pull out the stick for really any reason um, you know, if your municipal plan expires and it is no longer regionally confirmed, and that becomes kind of a red flag. But um, you know, other than that, we just ask folks that they participate in the program and they take advantage of the benefits as much as they would like to, or not, or the property owners take advantage of it as much or not. Um, so that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. I, I'll tell you that we're constantly trying to improve the program benefits um, for all our designations and. You know, there's been a lot in the legislature the past two years around, um, you know, some Act 250 exemptions for downtowns that we're, continu we're continuing to work on. Um, Five million dollar ask right now for downtown transportation fund uh, one time increase. And we're always looking for other things as a way to kind of enhance the benefits. So that's that's it in a nutshell. I'm happy to take feel any questions that you all have. Just point of clarification, Sherry uh, kind of initiated this. So I want to just thank her for uh, you know pulling Gary in and getting this launched. I did not initiate this. Sherry was uh, just really um, excited to investigate this. We've obviously been providing support out of the town manager's office. So thank you, Gary, for presenting. And just I wanted to put that out there for everybody. But there's questions here, so go ahead, folks. Um, I'm I'm wondering, would Hardwick be the smallest designated downtown? Uh. I, I, right now, the smallest designated downtowns that we have are Bristol, uh, Wilmington, and at one point, Bradford was designated. Um, mm -hmm. Now they have a village designation now because um, they weren't able to, it just wasn't working for them to have a, have an organization. And it, um, But yeah, so hard for, um, you guys would be, Hardwick would be, you know, in the mix of like Wilmington and Bristol size. They're definitely among the smallest. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But we have we have some larger communities that aren't you know designated like Woodstock's not designated um, as a downtown. Um, still has a village designation. They don't seem to be struggling for money that much. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just think think of it. Think of the de you know the upgrade and designation is just additional benefits. Um, and they're they're you know they're I think the with the, additional overhead. Um, 
additional overhead? You yeah. Said? What? What's the overhead? What's the overhead? Oh, well, we'd have to have a downtown commission or nonprofit. We have to, um, we'd have to have some funding for it. So. Yeah, I think, and, and part of that requirement is, our, you know, once again, we, when we established the program back in the late 90s, we modeled it after the National Main Street uh, approach um, to revitalization where, you know, dedicating volunteers and some resources towards revitalization efforts, um, you know, sees its return, you know, many times over. Um, by making those um, smart investments in in kind of the historic cores of our community, so it's yeah, it, it's 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 not nothing, right? right? There is something for sure. But in some ways, you, I I would compare it to um, how long it took us to hire a, even a part time person to do a community development work like Jeff is doing, and I believe I may be wrong. But I believe he's already paid for himself. Yeah, I think he has. Uh, he has paid for himself, yes. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, sometimes, you know, that investment is yeah. uh, mm -hmm. very beneficial. Uh, do other people have questions? I know we have a couple people from the, or did have. I invited a few people who are interested in serving on the downtown commission that we oh, to listen. potentially yeah. form. So Tobin uh, was on the was on the call for that reason, and um, I think Dave is is watching out because Tracy wasn't able to make it. But um, I don't know who yeah. else. Um, yeah, Tracy's on another Zoom meeting. You know, welcome to our lives nowadays. But uh, she is interested in Eric. I think you, I saw your reply to her letter of interest. Um, from the uh, putting on the hat in from the uh, planning commission, um, we're very much in favor of this because um, we see it as a perfect um, symbiosis to keep us connected with um, what's going on downtown with the business businesses there which the, as you know, the pedestrian and traffic task force has done a lot of surveying um, and trying to get input on improving the downtown and you have our recommendations for phase one. Um, but also looking forward to phase two, I think it'd be extremely effective, um, not only for having the commission uh, to be another body that would be more focused only on downtown that we could coordinate with when we're doing other things like, oh, our last meeting being, you know, in addition onto a cell tower that, you know, kind of took our time up. Um, and I think the other um, thing as far as the traffic and pedestrian task force is having the financial um, resources and planning for um, some of that phase two um, more extensive ideas we're kicking around. Um, you know, for instance, um, what exactly is gonna be done on um, Mill Street for the sidewalk and um, driveway access, you know, to make that a lot more pedestrian friendly and attractive. Obviously having um, a, a select body really focused on it a lot more than we were. It'd be another body to work with, plus um, having downtown designation obviously would open up a lot more funding. And I am excited um, about the 2022 paving and wondering if this isn't all kind of coming together at the same time so that the paving might coordinate with some sidewalk. That's fingers crossed. Anyways, the planning commission really, um, positive on this. I think it would be uh, very helpful and uh, really um, a positive uh, broadening of input and work on the downtown. Okay, thanks. Um, any other uh, questions or comments uh, for Gary while we have him? I have a question about the only tangentially related, but sort of related, the um, EV charging station right. program, which I think actually, in my mind, is pretty closely really related because when you look at the map of where that could go, when you look at the map of the current 
village designation, there's a fair amount of overlap. Um, and I'm wondering, is there, a, you know, is there a plan for coordination with the town at all for for where uh, charging stations could go? Yeah, let me uh, so I can let the committee know what, what this is in reference to. So uh, the state the state has um, uh, has a request for proposals out that we announced recently uh, to continue to build out of fast charge stations around the state. And we selected uh, six areas where there was gaps um, or where we felt there needed to be redundancy. And Hardwick kind of met that gap area um, really well, where we felt that was a really needed area to have the infrastructure. So um, we, um, the way we did this in the last round and the way we're doing it this round is we're, we're, we're asking a single bidder to um, install all six location, like own and operate and install all six locations. So what um, what's happening between now and June is whatever companies are out there that are interested in applying for this, mostly fast chart, you know, electric vehicle um, supplier companies would be the ones typically that would apply for this. Um, but you know, not to say that a utility couldn't apply and do a bunch, do them all too. But um, in general, it's the suppliers. And so, um, so Hardwick was selected, and we gave each of our areas like a defined radius, saying you need to site it within this area. Uh, and you're right that the area that we defined is um, is is mostly within that designated village area, not exactly. Um, and so what they're going to, these various applicants are going to need to do is they're going to need to reach out to municipalities and private property owners and try to find out who wants to be the site host. Um, and if, if the municip municipality is interested in being a site host and you have the perfect property, tell me, and then I can put that into the bidder's um, information saying, you know, here is some, here's some contact information around um, potential property owners that are interested in citing it um, here. Uh, if you know of a private property owner in Hardwick that you think would be the perfect um, place to site it within that radius of that map that we've defined, then, then let me know. And I can, I can share that with whoever's bidding. And when do you need that by? Uh, well, we're having a bit, we're having a mandatory bidders meeting next week. So anyone who's interested in, in applying is, is for next week. But anytime we have an update of information, I, we will just post that um, to our site so the bidders know. So, you know, this sooner the better. I mean, we are, this yeah. is going to be open uh, until the end of June, um, the request for proposals. So over the next, say, two months, uh, a little over two months is what the window of time is for the applicants to get. And they don't have to have a fully baked out um, host site agreement, they need to have kind of an acknowledgement from the property owner that they're going to move forward with them, um, some kind of a letter or something saying it, yes, and they can work out the legal agreements between the actual agreement um, later. And uh, I have a question born out of complete ignorance, but um, could the, does the, do the charging, I think there are three charging units at each two, two cars, um, and could they be in different locations or do they kind of um, need to be, for some reason, need to all be together? Uh, you know, um, it's, you're gonna want them in the same location for okay. a variety of reasons from an from a economical standpoint. There are two fast charge stations and then a level two charging station. Um, while they serve slightly different clientele, um, they're gonna be sited in the, in the same location. Okay. Um, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Any other well, questions? So, oh. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you, Gary, for coming to describe this to us. It's super helpful. Um, and just to follow up on that EV question, Eric, does, should we have this added to our next agenda or the agenda after just to talk about possible locations? Or is that more of a directive for Sean and the town manager to figure out what what might work for the EV station. Yeah, um, we certainly could add it to another agenda to see if we agree on on places. I know Sherry and I have already had like our little sidebar discussion about where we think it should go. Um, I like to tell Mike's in the Caribbean or whatever. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So it'd be it'd be great to talk to um, to Mike Sullivan, who's our uh, uh, director or uh, manager for the light department. Um, first, so yeah, maybe next time would be good. And so could, I add one yeah. thing. Yeah, I, just just to keep in mind, and, and this I, I just thought of this because it happened in our last round where we had a community um, offer recommendations, and then the. Uh, the bidder that was selected actually chose a different location um, based on a relationship they had with um, what, what we're seeing some of the gas companies getting in on this, like Irving Oil and Maple Fields and, and, and some of them. So if they have a relationship and they've established one in one town, then they may they may say, oh, you have a, you, you, it looks like that, that town has one too. And so mm -hmm. just keep that in mind that um, mm -hmm. I, I can't control these things. I don't know when, if they're, who they're having conversations with or, um, um, but having, having a recommendation is helpful, I think, for the bidders if because uh, they, they may be from out of state and they don't know, um, they don't have the relationship. So um, but it is helpful to kind of point them where you think is a good location. Whether or not they do it or not I, is out of our control. But yeah. So I do have one question, for, uh, Gary, just to come back around to the downtown designation. What do you see the next step as being for us? Do we need to? Um, does, do we need to just make a decision and, and uh, move forward or what's our next move? I, for the sake of moving forward, I would, I would say that, um, you know, this, the town should decide whether or not it wants to, it wants to move forward. Um, and then if so, do the, res, you know, do the resolution and say we approve, you know, kind of moving forward with this process, um, at least that part, right? And then if, if you do that, I, I would strongly suggest that you move forward with, um, with a board, you know, appointing, appointing a board commission and see who from the community wants to you know, um, apply for those, those seats and decide how many, you know, you don't want it to be three people. You don't want it to be 15 people probably. It's like find that right number um, for your community that's gonna be a good balance of, you know, property business owners, uh, people who have a vested interest in the downtown residents even. Um, so I, I'd say that that be important, and then um, and then divide divide up the responsibilities based on expertise. Like looking at the application, um, you know, developing a downtown strategic plan for the could be someone on the commission could be working on that. Where um, um, you know answering the questions around the planning commitment might be you know, David, the planning commission or the zoning administrator may be kind of helping to answer some of those questions in that particular box. Um, um, and then, Sean, you know, Sean, whoever, you know, whoever takes over your, you know, your position, um, you know, or you before you leave, working on kind of answering the questions around the capital improvement plan and budget, um, you know, so just kind of dividing up the responsibilities to people so that you can kind of keep it moving, setting a timeline so that it isn't just like a loose end that just never quite happens, like trying to say, how, how ambitious do we want to be? What seems realistic? Uh, we, we can take, we can take, we can take an application the first Monday of any month for that, that same month's review from the board um, uh, for the fourth Monday of the month. Um, but like I said, I, I'm happy to review pieces of the application before seeing a complete application if you want to do it that way. Um, so that's my recommendation to, make, to move it forward. Thanks. Dave. Um, just going back to the electric vehicle charging station. Did I hear you mention that utilities have bid in the past to be the uh, owner operator um, of the stations? It, yeah, I, I haven't I haven't had any of them apply for any of the programs that we've managed, but in the past Green Mountain Power has, in, you know, had invested some um, some money in public public charging stations. I don't know that they're interested in continuing to do that. They've let some of their stations kind of um, expire. Um, uh, they're focused more on um, on offering some of the incentive programs through their utilities at Green Mountain Power, Burlington Electric, Washington Co-op. I think um, uh, I think they're all they're all offering incentives to homeowners, and uh, Green Mountain Power is offering a workplace charging. Uh, program. So I think they're focused more on kind of the workplace and housing and, and less so on the on the on the public charging. Um, but that's not to say that a local utility couldn't, you know, play a role in, in, in installing, um, you know, and applying for money. But this particular program that we have right now is it's in 
probably three or three different electric utility districts. Um, so uh, I wouldn't imagine a utility would apply because they have to install all six in three different electric utility areas, Thank you. right? Tob Tobin has his hand up. Um, uh, <clears throat> thank you, Gary, for the presentation. Um, I just have a question about question to the board about going back to the designated downtown commission. Um, what is the next step in terms of does the, the board need to approve that commission's existence or or is it what's the next step with that commission? I think, well, from my perspective and Gary can correct me, but my perspective is first the, the select board would need to um, make a statement or resolve to move forward with a downtown designation application. And then, you know, maybe concomitant with that, um, create a downtown commission. Can and we you do that? Define, define what the commission's, you know, role is and, how, and, and the how structure, many people and, many people and yeah, um, terms. Yeah. The base, the basic structure of it, and then and then allow that commission to kind of dive deep into kind of all the details of of um, of what they're going to be working on. But yeah, defining what their charge is. So, so can we? Does, oh, does the board ahead. want to talk about that today, or is that on the next agenda? I just want to sort of get a sense of a timeline. Uh. I want to talk about it yesterday, so everybody knows that. So, you know. so basically, it sounds like what we could do today is say that we are interested in in seeing what a commission could look like, and then at the next meeting review that and make a decision. Is that kind of what I'm? Yeah, that's what hearing? I'm hearing as well. Um, I do have another question for Gary, though, while you're here, and you know, thank you for all this bringing all this to us is really helpful. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you did mention, I think Bradford um, kind of doing a designated downtown and then uh, not keeping it up. And I'm wondering if, so Hardwick was like last time we brought, we had this conversation seriously. I think we looked into it and we couldn't kind of drum up that downtown uh, commission. And we currently have a situation where we don't have, you know, our planning commission, I think still has one or two open seats and has had for years, it seems like. So in the event that we could, that the select board decided to move ahead with this, that we were able to start a downtown commission and then the downtown commission kind of fizzled, um, could, could we fall back to our village center designation or does it not really work that way? Yeah, no. You yeah, there's, I mean, yes, you can fall back to your village designation, you know, whenever, you know, if that, if you were going to be, you're, you're in a position for whatever reason, and you can't, can't maintain that obligation as part of the designated downtown requirement, um, and you've worked it out, you know, you've tried to work on it for, and it's not like we just lost the, you know, we, we were down to one member and the commission's not working. It's not like I'm just going to like pull the carpet out from under yeah. you, like right away. I mean, we're going to work together and you know, give you some time to try to figure it out. And, you know, it's not like it's like a, you know, red light, green light thing. Um, but certainly if, if you found that like, boy, this is just more than we can, more than we bargained for, we can't, you know, we can't keep up this commission and sure. Hopefully, hopefully this will, yeah, you know, I think what, what happened last time, there was just, you know, the people who signed onto the commission, I know a couple, you know, Sherry, you know, you're wearing 10 hats and, um, and and Tracy um, was just starting a new job with the state, and and she and she was also doing a lot, and and so obviously people all sometimes get involved are are the kind of people that you want that you want because they're they're doers. Um, but I think trying to strike that balance, like I said, not having asking three people to do all the work, like maybe you have seven or nine, um, and, and you kind of try to get a good mixture of folks who have different skills and talent to, to kind of. Uh, and time commitments to be able to contribute, um, and then hope, and then hope, and there's a natural kind of ebb and flow on any board. You're going to have people, life circumstances change, and they can't serve anymore. And then you get some fresh new energy. I mean, hopefully that does happen, and you get some natural, um, get people excited about some of the work that the commission's doing. Um, and then, hey, I want to get involved. How can I help? Or I can't be on the commission. Can I just volunteer on this project that you're working on? Um, that kind of thing. Hopefully you can 
find some folks that are that are excited about it. I think ultimately we did that that way. You know, we we did the little uh, stop start stop thing, and um, so I certainly learned a lot from that, and uh, and I know more about what the com what the commitment really is, and um, explaining to people who I'm trying to recruit for the commission what that is um, in a better way. So um, I just think, I think we're in a better place right now to do it than we were then. Yeah. That's all. I just have a quick question, please. Are, are there any state mandated requirements for what these commissions have to look like or any sort of really well articulated documentation as far as the program requirements for each community? Yeah, you know, in, in statute, it's it's pretty loosely defined on, you know, um, that it can be a downtown commission or a downtown organization. You know, we don't dictate the type of organization it is, like it has to be a 501c3 or 501c6, or it has to have this many members. I think the main thing is that um, the, commission's, the commission's focus or the downtown organization's focus is primarily focused on the revitalization and the preservation of downtown, the downtown area as defined during this process. Um, right now you have a village, cent, you know, village center designation boundary. It doesn't mean that you're not helping the businesses just across that boundary either, right? It's like you're, but, you're, but it might mean that you're not focused on what's going on at the, at the dump or what's going on in the industrial park. Like your focus is primarily on that kind of revitalization of that area. Um, and in some cases we have communities that are doing other types of work as well, but that, that's their primary focus. Um, you don't want to dilute it by having an entity that's focused on everything across the entire town and then they, they lose their ability to have enough time and focus specifically on what we're trying to achieve. If that makes sense. Yes, thank you. But we try to stay out of like telling you what to do, like try to set the guardrails and the parameters, but then let you run with how it's going to work best for your community. Thank you. Yep. So going back to Kaylee's summary, which I thought was good, like we could um, try to, someone could try to draft out what a, what a commission might look like and um, for next time, and we could take it up, maybe be ready to vote on whether we wanna pursue this or not at our next meeting. And, and if so, um, be ready to establish it, maybe be ready to establish a commission, at least the- or, and, or the resolution. Yeah. I'm on it. Sherry's on it. <laughs> Sounds good. Meeting. Get ready. Next meeting. Action item. Action item. Got it. All right. Well, Gary, thanks. And thanks for not only doing the, uh, the downtown stuff, but also covering the EV charging station thing. Sure. Gary, you must have been testifying recently because you referred to the group as the committee. Oh. <laughs> 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 Thanks for your time. All serious. Committees, commissions, boards, councils, you know, they all kind of blur together, don't they? Yeah. Uh, just a shout out to uh, <laughs> Gary's agency. Uh, agency of Commerce and Community Development is uh, does a lot uh, for the town of Hardwick. So I uh, just want to say thank you. There's various employees that are assisting us on all sorts of things. And just really good to have that support from your group. So thank you, Gary. Appreciate your time. Absolutely. I'll, I'll pass that along to, to our group. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Let, let us know. Let us know if you have any questions about anything. Um, you know how to how to find me. Happy to come back and answer any other questions that you have, or just pick up the phone and give me a shout. Gary, I'll reach out to you and just make sure I've got the uh, you know some of the PowerPoint reference and you know executive summary information so that we uh, you know make sure we have that for this next uh, select board meeting as well. Okay. Yep. All right. Thanks All right. again. Hey, thank you. Take okay. care. Yeah, you too. All right. Bye bye. So next up is item two, select board to discuss downtown walkways and parking spaces. And then um, does somebody have a, a Sean or do we have a select board member who's on this? 
I can just make what I could do as a lead in Eric is just talk about um, the report coming off last, uh, you know, we're phase one, some of the phase one stuff, if that would be valuable, I could do a quick summary of that. Hang on. I just had it up and I lost it. Sean, it would also be valuable to know our budget for this year, what we've um, earmarked for this as what, and that doesn't include that $15,000 grant, correct? Um, as far as this fiscal year, if there were discussions on, um, so the, the couple of things hanging out there from the last meeting would be the uh, push button LED, uh, LED crosswalk devices, the uh, speed feed radar device for inbound um, on uh, 15, Route 15 inbound. So that Glenside Avenue would be on your left-hand side. We are, we've, we don't have the budget for this fiscal year. So we are looking at, you know, any other additional implementations on these things with uh, board's uh, input would be uh, July 1st and on. We've got uh, just a yeah, little I, bit left. I guess, sorry, sorry if that, I, I meant our next year's budget, sorry. Yeah, for next year's, um, yeah, we, um, well, I would comment on the, uh, just one thing, the push button uh, crosswalk uh, signal device, uh, you know, just recall that was to get these paired up, which is actually required. One of those uh, as of last October was uh, what, 70, 7,700 bucks, 7,800 bucks. So they're pretty pricey. Speed readback devices are, uh, I just checked today to get an update from the consultant. The price as of last October was for a solar powered one was about 2,600 bucks. So um, just, you know, these things, are, there's some cost here, that's all right. And uh, that, uh, I don't mean to say it can't be done, but just recognize there's some cost. Hang on one second, folks, I'm trying to multitask and I can't do it. So I need to focus on pulling up the, uh, the update from uh, last time around. I'd just like to comment, please. I looked over the, the report that was sent out pretty extensively, and I absolutely agree that the crosswalk configuration and the parking spaces that abut it directly are an incredible hazard for a pedestrian going across the street. And we're gonna lose spaces to put some sort of mandated distance between the crosswalk and the parking spots but downtown already has a very serious parking dilemma. And what are we gonna to do to make up spaces? If we really want people to be down there, they need to be able to park somewhere. Um, yes, that's, uh, that's the ongoing uh, dilemma of downtown. It is, you know, I think that maybe we should consider some town owned property where it might be appropriate to put uh, two-story parking garage or something. I mean, I've looked around the town on the state's parcel maps as to what the town actually owns. There aren't really very many good possibilities in the downtown area. A lot of it due to the terrain problems, what is owned by the town is either in a floodplain or on a really steep incline, but we have to come up with some kind of better parking solution. Taking away the spots is going to drive people away but taking away the spots is going to keep the pedestrians much safer. I got to agree with that. The way they are now is absolutely atrocious. Just very I, briefly, just very briefly, if I can just put this in just, and then I'll let board lead the discussion. Cause obviously you got to have some, uh, you're going to be making some calls here on things. Um, last year, one of the things we figured out is we had to pair up the uh, led crosswalk devices so we did that right now it's located at um, Hardwick Hotel heading over to uh, the clip joint uh, near the uh, town parking lot, if you will. Uh, so that's where it's located as of now. Um, Tom is getting geared up to put down the paint, but as uh, you'll, you'll recognize, you know, not has not done the uh, downtown area as of yet because we got to just get the feedback from the board how you want to proceed. We have checked a little bit of detail in regards to uh, colors and uh, just some of the information that the task force group had suggested this past year. So when it's appropriate, we can comment on that. Um, we did double check the price on the speed feedback device for inbound on Glenside, as I've already pointed out. So uh, all factors being equal, we would plan to implement that in this next fiscal year. We think that is uh, you know something we, we are planning for and we can implement. Um, let me just see, just looking at the report, anything else that I should offer now? Uh, we are intending to do the, uh, 
uh, put down the uh, um, uh, stop look wave uh, little uh, indicators at the base of the crosswalks. Um, and then uh, just tying this in with our um, one of the other things we have gotten feedback from VTRANS as well as our regional planning commission is for the existing crosswalk signage, uh, what we need to work on. And, and Tom and I talked about this this week and we're working on this. You've got to have a, a, the little signs, um, both sides of the street for the crosswalk. I say little signs, uh, you know, everybody knows you see the on the yellow caution sign where you have the pedestrian that's the indication there's a crosswalk you can't you're not supposed to just have it on the right side but it should be also on the left side of the road as well so that's one of the things that we're working on pairing up these signs uh, per recommendation of vtrans and uh, nvda so just a couple things to uh, put on the table for now and and just that's what i wanted to say you know coming off the last uh, fall report so Sorry. Sean, i just have a oh. Uh, so I, and I don't have it in front of me, I apologize, but we starting next year have approximately $15,000 earmarked for, is that correct? For our budget for these pedestrian safety features, there was a, there was a line item. I thought that, um, all of this work kind of fell into. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot my town report at the office with the line items. So that's if that's got, what's noted there. I've got my town report, and I cannot. I've been that's what I've been looking for just now, and I cannot find it. You think it was a line item, Kaylee? I remember discussing it. It was under it was under Tom's budget. If I oh, remember highway? correctly. Uh, okay. No, I don't think I got underneath anything in my budget for that, Eric. Uh, the only thing that I can think of the 15,000 is for sidewalk repair in, in the capital. Oh, that could be. If you look in under capital, there's a yeah. line item in there for yeah. sidewalk. Yeah, we could use that, some of that. Well, I know we've been earmarking some of that money for the bike path and stuff, so. Yeah, we, we, I think we could spend that money several times over. But Tom, so something like the sidewalk recommendations, that would come out of your budget, but it's additional signs like the speed reader that would not. Is that what you're thinking? Right, of? because we, right, because the only thing I got in my budget for crosswalks is basically for the line paintings and stuff in my regular yeah. budget, and, and that's it. Uh, you're going to be looking into capital if there's going to be any money, and that's in, we put money away each year for sidewalks. And usually yeah. that's to upgrade them and stuff like that. Or in this case, I believe we did use some of that money for the speed readers last year too. Yeah. And we also, I'm just looking, we also have a road sign slash crosswalks line in the public works section of the capital improvements plan. Right. And that's for buying sign posts, you know, new signage yeah. and stuff like that. And so that would cover the crosswalk signs that Sean was just talking about too, right, Tom? Right, right. Because I went in, inside the room today and I think I got seven more that we're going to be able yeah. to kind of back to back and get get those done. So the uh, share, just real quick on the budget side of things, the share the road bike signs that had been uh, uh, talked about through the task force work. We'll be able to cover those under the uh, VORAC uh, grant that we just obtained. That was through Vermont Community Foundation. So we're, we'll have those. Uh, that will be covered. We don't have to look for that money. There's a portion of that that will cover those those signs. So my understanding, and I may have gotten it wrong, but so we the the current crosswalk blinking sign that we have. Um, was paid out of last year's budget and then my i thought that we had budgeted for a second set because we knew at that point how much it cost um because we had it right so isn't there a, another set budgeted for i don't think so not to my knowledge anyways i know it it, it, it was talked about but there was never anything saying okay we're going to be setting aside more money for these crosswalks. I thought, 
Go ahead, Go ahead Eric. I was just going to say, it seems, it seems like uh, we, we might not be able to make that many decisions tonight if we don't know what our budget is for this, unfortunately. I agree. I agree. But I think we I'm wondering to... if... Oh, sorry, Eric. No, go I was ahead. just going to say that it would be super helpful to add to the report that was in our folder. I don't know if it should be Sean or the Planning Commission. If we could just check off what's already been done and then what's left and the cost of it and where it's coming from, because... Um, you know, some of that's going to be covered by these different grants that we've received. And it, it would just be, I think we'd be able to make the decision a lot more cleaner if we knew where the money was coming from. And we could say, it, it also makes sense if we do have some money that we set aside um, this year specifically for these projects, if we use them before June 30th. So um, I would just, it would be great to see the numbers so we could really make some decisions quickly because, you know, you, Tom, probably need to be painting the side. Maybe we can make that decision tonight. Um, but the decisions around the si the signage we could make once we know what our budget is. We got to figure out. This yeah, I mean, long issue. Yeah, yeah, we're going to need to know about the crosswalks and the parking issue. The other stuff can come later because those. Uh, I mean, you're 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 going to order those, and they're going to be at least a month out. So. Well, and and in my mind too, if we take if we get rid of those parking spots, we. The other recommendation was to have either planters or something that can be a physical deterrent because people are still going to park there even if there's, <laughs> even if it doesn't show it, if there's no barrier or anything where they can't actually park. And then the other question is signage around parking, which is also a recommendation from the planning commission, which to Michael's point earlier, if we're going to take parking spots away, we should be directing people to other places where they can be parking because we do have plenty of parking. It's just not necessarily obvious where it is. Yeah. Um, but we could, I hope we could make a decision about the crosswalk and paint and what the painting of the crosswalk could be. Um, we had the information that was collected about what the approved crosswalk patterns are. And I, I would like to see us make a change to what that pattern is and incorporate two colors. You know, you have to use their approved colors and all that kind of stuff. But I think that a big visual change, you know, not doing the same white bands um, and actually maybe doing the one that has the you know, white on the outside and red in the middle or yellow in the middle um, might uh, help us along the way to have people have a visual, um, you know, like it, the impact might be good where they see, oh, hey, this is different, you know, and so maybe that would help change it up a little bit. Um, I don't know yeah. if had a chance to look at those different patterns that are up seems like we could do that i don't know if it's um if it's a, if it's okay but you know it's not make it a little wider <laughs> it, it's if we make it a little wider to incorporate that um that that um you know the the uh, uh what do you call it dave the the space around it where people enter the crosswalk. You got me. I'm not sure this is what you're looking for. You're talking about the approach to the crosswalk? Yeah, where you're supposed to not be parking your car. Yeah, yeah. The, the buffer zone. The in bumper, other words, yeah. back bumper right at the edge of the crosswalk. Yeah, yeah. the sight lines that were. The sight lines. Those. Yeah. Can the crosswalk be a little wider, you know, feeding into this? center of the road one of the things that uh we did is uh tom checked some, with some uh, contacts this week and i did as well um you know just in regards to the colors on the crosswalks and um what we got for some general feedback was yeah you can do uh you have to have the borders in white you have you you have to avoid a multicolor. This is some feedback direct from uh, John Coplans, who does the VTrans. He's the coordinator for. He's a lead on crosswalks, and um, yeah, uh, just um, let me let me just read this back. Um, crosswalks must have white pavement markings, 
and you can do one of the patterns that's identified. So, you know, we had some examples from the uh, pedestrian and traffic safety task force that, that showed like a pattern with multiple colors. The VTRANS feedback um, was, uh, and also our regional, Doug Morton regional uh, planning feedback that I got was you, you really got to stay away from doing uh, multiple interior colors. And uh, if I have it correct from Tom, um, the contact he reached out to said, you know, we, this is a town highway, but because of the traffic volume, the state has some say. So the point is this, uh, whatever uh, the board's preference, we want to just, we're going to have to clear this and make sure that the state is comfortable with it before we start laying down paint. I, I think this is important. And just, I would say this, we didn't, uh, I'll, I'll take the responsibility for this last year. We didn't really double check this on our uh, push button crosswalk LEDs as an example. After those were put in, you know, we got the clarification that they need to be paired up. And then even after that, they said, uh, you know, just so everybody in the town is advised, VTRANS is last step uh, on a crosswalk station. It's a very last step is to go toward one of the crosswalk LED devices. You know, there's other things you can be implementing for pedestrian uh, and sightline uh, safety issues. So just I, I think it's important everybody recognizes we have some recommendations here, but uh, you know, given the traffic volume here, VTrans is going to have, uh, you know, going to be involved with what does get put down here. Um, if I could just jump in for clarification, that information we, in the diagrams we submitted, was all off the AOT website, off their documents on crosswalks and everything. So that's directly from them. Now, there mm -hmm. might be best practices, but that okay. information wasn't just coming from somewhere randomly on the web that's from Vermont AOT. Yeah, I, and I've I was, got the original yeah, right. um, documents that are obviously much more extensive to give more detail. Yeah, and I wasn't implying that was rogue, Dave. I, yeah, you guys have done extensive research on that, I know. So, I'll read back from John Kaplan. Kaplan is, um, you know, it's uh, class one town highway, VTRANS maintains joint jurisdiction with the town. So how he framed it was if uh, if you went rogue uh, with some wild pattern, we'd probably take some action to rectify the situation. They want to assist us. And, you know, the end point here is we want to have a, a safer crossing situation. That's the goal here, right? A wild pattern, just saying. Not suggesting a wild pattern, just suggesting a different um, pattern than we've had for many years. Those white, just the, the standard block pattern is apparently what it looks like we had. And I'd like us to try one of the other standard patterns and use two colors. So I'd like us to move on. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna suggest that, um, because personally I'm not too wrapped up in colors or not colors. I will say that my own personal view is that, um, that the standard white bars are as a driver, those are what I'm used, to. that's what triggers me immediately. That's a crosswalk. Well, I wish, I, I wish it was a trigger for more people then. Well, I'm just, just saying that there are times well, when then it's good to like st something that's um, something that's, that's old and is sometimes something that's recognized. That's I like those flashing yeah. lights. Those really get people's attention. Well, the, the, uh, the block pattern that we're using now, Eric, is what the DOT has. Uh, basically have been using and that's what they kind of have, have gone to uh the two by twos is what we use by six foot those are what uh aot are using uh the other thing that they said was the colors uh cannot be red green yellow purple and i think there was a couple other ones and the other stuff they were saying too is that you cannot have your color of your painting retro reflective uh, because they want to keep all that on your signage and, and make, make sure that people aren't getting distracted and stuff. Okay, so, but I think, Tom, I mean, I think you just said it couldn't be red, but I think that Sherry was saying that it could be a white outline with red inside. And I think Dave, Hold an image of that. No, no, it's not red. It's a different color. It's it's kind of it's it's almost like a rust color. 
Oh, uh, it, 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 it's definitely not red. Whatever. Uh, that color is. Yeah. Whatever that color is. We so, could go so with blaze orange. So, I, um, I think part of the reason why we wanted to bring this up now is because Tom is going to need to be doing laying this paint <laughs> soon. soon. Um, yeah. So, and and also we asked the planning commission to provide us with recommendations that were based off of studies and lots of work, and this was a big part of their presentation and and also the pedestrian safety task force. I think if we can explore. Uh, something different for this summer. Um, it could be whatever makes sense for the state and for our town and for Tom, but it is a big part of the recommendation. And then it sounds like the bigger recommendations, we can wait until we know what our budget is, but that it seems like the paint is kind of the priority because that's going to be being laid first. And then Tom also needs to know if we're cutting out those parking spots or not as well. Right. So let's deal with those two things. Let's try to hit those two things first. So let's, so the crosswalks and we're talking about just the, like the downtown, right downtown crosswalks, right? Or are we talking about all crosswalks in the town of Hardwick? Well, they all need to be repainted, but yeah. So in the, but in the downtown area, we could say, like on Main Street area, we'd like those to be what? Buried, different. Tom um, and I did talk today about doing the uh, the white with the, uh, we'll call it a rust fill. Is that fair? It's not a bright red. It's like a rust fill. It's a neutral red. That was... Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, that was, uh, it was one of the examples. I'm looking at the color copy of the uh, repaint of the, the repaint page from the study and it comes off as a bright red, but it's more of a flat, um, I, I keep saying I'll rust. Try that on, nor on Main Street, South Main, Main Street, Mill Street, right there in the heart of downtown on those crosswalks. How about if we try the new two color approach? Yeah, it's going to be the caveat of uh, we got to make sure we can get it. That's all. Other crosswalks that are like on Wilkett Street and up by up, uh, past the townhouse and um, that those are the other, the what we've had in the past, the white uh, block pattern. Tom, I don't know if you had a chance to check on this rust color today. I know we looked at, uh, we talked about it a little bit yesterday. Do we know if we can get that color? No, I don't, Sean. I was so waiting on the check. decision tonight to see what was going to be going on. So. Okay, got it. We'd have to check that, of course. That's just, fine. just for a point of clarification, in our recommendations, the uh, PDF that provided, it's got a diagram showing the white block with the red infill, which give, could give everybody a sense of one suggestion. I think that's the one Sherry's describing. All right, so... I'd really love to move on. So is that something we can decide or let's are we decided on that? We're gonna ask Tom to move in that direction. Correct. Kaylee's giving the thumbs up. Michael? Yes. Yes. Sure. And Sherry, I'm all right with that. So village area sounds, basically. What? Village area yes. basically. Village area. Board generally agrees to try to do this white border with a rust infill on the crosswalks in the downtown village area. And that's only a handful of crosswalks, right? Maybe six or something, I don't know. Good. And then for the parking spaces, um, we did do, you know, the one space that was moved, that was the, you know, the handicap space that we moved back last fall, um, that there were some barriers there, but then those went away and et cetera, et cetera. Can, are we gonna at least paint lines on that um, area so that that one truck that likes to park there all the time uh, is parking on top of lines at least? Maybe that'll be- Yeah, yeah. So like a, just the, the like hash lines that indicate you're not supposed to park there. But it's not a parking spot. Yeah, and last year we put the there. 
we put the traffic barrier up there last year. If we need to do that again, we could do it again. With the traffic barrier up, the highway crew put that up. We had to wait for the weather to change, get it back up. We can do that again. And you can still see around it getting out of the post office parking lot. It keeps people from rolling into that slot. That'd be good. I think lines are good too. I mean. All and right. Then, as far as the other parking spaces that we were going to try to adjust. Mm. Uh, around where the crosswalks are for the sight lines so that it's a little safer. Are we gonna do that? Like basically take a half a space on either side so it just adjusts? Well, it's basically gonna be a whole space, Sherry. Right, it equals a whole space. No, no, the state law requires that without buffers, you have to have 20 feet clearance on each side of the sidewalk. With buffers, it's 10 feet. That's a lot of parking spaces. Yeah, well, what do we uh, have now? We'd have no buffers and no, um, yeah, we don't have either. So, if, Right, so if you did all the crosswalks plus the three that you were talking about up in front of Positive Pie when you swing up around uh, Wilkes Street for trucks, you're talking 12 parking spots be taken away. So, Tom, just to clarify, so, uh, so right now we have what 18 inches from the parking space to the crosswalk that's okay if 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 you do have that much some places you only have a foot or so yeah so kaylee's question though that's is that okay like is that legal or you just said that we needed to have 20 feet if we didn't have a barrier it's not okay. That's why we're having the discussion, but I don't think it's fair that Tom should answer this question. I mean, this is why we're having the discussion. We're trying to create some additional space, folks. Oh, well, yeah. I, I don't, I don't I know whether it's to... fair or not. I mean, that's, that, I'm, I'm, I mean, you, you know, the 30 plus years I've been here, that's the way it's always been. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, if, if you're going to rip up the entire downtown, new sidewalks, new blacktop, new everything like that, the, the state will require you to put those buffers out because you're reconstructing everything. Now, if you leave it the way it is, I don't know whether or not, you, you know, that falls under that or not. They never have. I see. So we're kind of right. grandfathered in is what you're saying, Tom. <laughs> More or less, I believe so. But I mean, I can get clarity on that. Uh, it also, I mean, just... With what you just said, Tom, I think is important because um, VTrans is talking about coming through and paving next summer. So to me, it right. seems like that's the time, like, well, this summer is the time to work with VTrans on planning for how to get some buffers in around the crosswalks. And I don't know, I mean, maybe other right. um, I mean, they will have a meeting with us sometime this summer, Eric, because they always do after they get done doing their survey and they will set up a planning or a meeting with the town to go over and tell us basically what they're coming through to do. I know the last time they went through 20 plus years ago, all they basically did, they, in, they, they basically ground the entire town right down to the concrete and that was it. And then they repaved everything. Right. But I think this time we need to, when we have, when we sit down with them, we need to say, and we want you know, pedestrian safety improvements. You know, they right, don't but they might turn around and say, well, right, you, you know, that that might fall on us because we're going to have to redo all the sidewalks. Yeah, or part of it you might know, fall on us. Yeah, but I think we need right. to have that conversation with them. And I think that large, my opinion is that the large changes really should wait to happen to, to happen with that process. But other so people if we, sure have other opinions. So if we just get rid right. of that I mean, one we're not going to want... The, the one right on the corner for this year and the next year potentially have like a bigger project. Is that what you're saying, Eric? Yeah. Well, like me and Sean were discussing, you know, we don't want to do nothing too drastic downtown unless un until we have the meeting with, with v VTrans and see exactly what's going to happen and what they're going to do. Right. Right. So, okay. So for tonight though, we could, so 
in the in the recommendations, um, you know, one area that is difficult as we do, I think Kaylee was just referencing the parking on the corner right in front of the clip joint. Is that right? I hope so. Between those part crosswalks. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a really difficult place. I mean, it's not only that you have cars parking right up against the crosswalks, but you also have very poor sight lines because the major state highways are making like a 90 degree bend right there. Um, I think it would probably be useful to eliminate those two. Also, parking that end of things, if you're going to park there anyway, you're also fairly close to the um, public parking lot that's across from the village market. You're close to the parking that's right next to the clip joint. Um, I think there are other options there for parking. So, how about we start with that? Like, we won't paint those. Or we could even do we not paint them, or we paint them with the hat with the lines that, that indicate you shouldn't park them. Well, we'd, we'd also talked about just maybe a planter or uh, you know something that's a physical barrier because the sight lines are a problem. But also, what happens is if there are no cars in that spot and somebody steps out and there's a car trying to turn left, what is the experience of many Hardwick folks is that the car will cut to the inside and it's really dangerous for the pedestrian. So yeah. Try to but if we kind of a physical block there, if we do the diagonal lines for now, because that's in our budget, because Tom has money for paint, hopefully, <laughs> then we can. If we've got money, we could maybe do a planter. If the lines are there, maybe we can just just remind Aaron that that or or like maybe that could be policed or just kept an eye out for. Technically, we do sometimes give tickets, maybe not tickets or warnings, or there sometimes there's comes and goes <laughs> um but maybe we could just we could just update aaron because he's not on the call anymore that we're gonna do that uh, the police department is de definitely issuing tickets for moving violations to be clear here now um, if a car passes on the inside it's a moving violation you're talking about parking park on it. That's oh. yeah. in the past we have had the animal control officer write tickets sometimes he's, not, he's no longer that mm -hmm. person no. i know just saying we've had other creative solutions so could we so can we does it do we agree on that that for right now for what tom changes in tom's painting it sounds like we've got the changes to the sidewalk the crosswalk patterns and then um painting lines across where the um handicap spot used to be by the post office and isn't a spot anymore and then painting lines across the place right in between the crosswalks in front of the clip joint to indicate no parking. Is that correct? Is yeah. everybody in agreement? And then we're going to look at um, in a future meeting, near future meeting, we're going to look at how we can afford other signage and additional. Yeah, uh, I think we should. Yeah. But I, the recommendations that we already have. I think we ought to work with VTrans for implementing all that stuff next year when they come through. I mean, a lot of the recommendations are VTrans recommendations or requirements even, right? So if they're coming through and grinding down and repaving downtown, we I think that's a perfect time to say, guess what? We really need some bump outs for these crosswalks. Okay, let's stay on it. Yes. I also, Sean mentioned earlier in his report, wanting to know if we want to close off the village. Oh, park, yeah. the, I don't know if we want to talk about that tonight or if we need to talk about that tonight, Sean. We can address it at the um, May 6th meeting. We have some time. And yeah, because I, yeah, I want... Uh, painting the lines, we d we have discussed this in the past. Um, the lines, the spaces in the village parking lot are really tight. So, um, before you paint those lines, can we talk about that, or are you going to go do that, Tom? Before we no, we already did that last year, Sherry. We expanded them a little little bit more by a foot. Okay, okay, still feels tight to me, but okay. <laughs> All right. And 
Yeah, so we're going to talk about tables later because, yeah, I do have some things I'd like to discuss about putting tables out and um, in the parking lot. It, I think that's really more up to Lynn. Now that they're open for partial seating and by July, it seems that we're headed in a direction where, you know, so people can go in. I think it's very possible that there are going to be enough tables outside in Claudia's property and then those other two, even though they don't seem to ever get actually cleaned. It's just apparently me that cares about that part. But, um, you know, having those tables out in the parking lot, I don't know. They just didn't seem like they got used all the time. And now that you can go inside the, the diner, I don't think they would be as necessary this year. I agree. Pardon? She has she has uh, commented in favor of doing it. I just oh, but, really? um, yeah, yeah, she has actually. I'm surprised, but let's talk well, about that and toilets at our next yeah. meeting. Yeah, let's I, do that. Eric, I have a little bit of extra time, but could we move the equity item if we're done with this item up? Is that okay? That's fine with me. So we had that as a number nine, I think, but we can bring that up and do that now before you leave. Do you wanna Great. introduce that? Yeah, thank you. So um, so the equity committee at our last meeting, um, one of our members brought up, there are quite a few um, organizations and municipals um, around the country, but also in Vermont who have put out a statement similar to the one that was included in the board folder. Um, and basically what we're requesting is that the select board approve the statement to um, be hopefully put a, on the town website um, on our Facebook page and then we would also share it on Fort Porch Forum. There was a little bit of confusion between myself and Casey and so it, the statement did actually go out. Um, Sean, do you remember? I don't have the email in front of me. It went out on a, um, it was posted. I believe it was printed off and posted at the post office um, before it was approved. Um, and that was just a bit of miscommunication. So we're hoping that we could actually approve it tonight. It has been approved by our committee um, and I'm happy to read it for the board as well, if you'd like. Yeah, I would like you to read it. It's fairly short. If you could just read it out, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Give me one second. Um, so, the Hardwick Equity Committee um, wrote the statement about anti-Asian sentiment and violence. Due to the recent climate of anti-Asian violence, the town of Hardwick Select Board is taking this moment to intentionally and deliberately stand by our Asian and Pacific Islander communities and reaffirm our commitment to the Hardwick Equity Resolution. The Hardwick Select Board condemns and denounces any and all racist sentiment or aggression towards these communities, including microaggressions related to COVID. short and sweet and again it's basically a statement that to be approved similar to the statement that we approved at our last meeting so you want a motion to approve the statement on um, anti-asian violence please so moved second uh all in favor please say aye 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 yay thank you kaylee for bringing that to us yeah thanks everybody Sean, is there, should I just connect with you after the, to, uh, tomorrow or next week about ways to get that out? Yep. Um, just go ahead and send it to me an email, a copy. Um, uh, just let's see. Yeah, just get it to me and we'll, uh, we'll see what's taken okay. care of. Thank you very much. Um, well, thanks everybody. Have a great rest of your night. Sorry, I can't finish it out with you. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Bye. All right. Um, where are we? Uh, we did the police officer earlier. Oh, we need to authorize the update of the local emergency management plan. Sean gave us the updated um, plan in our packet. Um, basically, this plan is just, you know, set up in case of emergency. It, it just lays out who's, who's uh, in charge, you know, that Tom does fire and who the town manager is and who's our dispatch and all that. Where the so, emergency... Up in Hazen, whatever. Yeah, the whole thing. It, so was, it was based off last year's, but there were some changes in regards to um, just trying to pull in more narrative this year. So it took a little bit more time than I anticipated, but 
the uh, it's it is a valuable document in that it's a one stop shop for a lot of contacts you know that are important whether there's an emergency or not. So just for what it's worth, it's also uh, great that we think about it beforehand so that in the case of emergency, it's already flushed out. Yeah. So NVDA our NVDA contact has cleared it, so um, it's in good order with with the board's clearance. It would then be submitted to Vermont Emergency Management for the annual acceptance. So I will, I will make the motion that we authorize the annual update of the local emergency management plan. I will second that motion. Excellent. All in favor, please say aye. 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 So that's three of us. We motion carries. Eric, Next I'll have you sign the authorization form. I'll get that to you. There's okay. a short authorization form that you actually have to sign off on. Do we All love of us or just Eric. Okay. We do we uh, have to wait today? We have something else to sign, so we I'll be in anyway. Yeah, that's fine, Eric. Um, I don't remember what it was, but I know there's something. It's Next is uh, item five is fireworks. Do we want to go ahead with fireworks this year? No. I say no. <laughs> Mike, uh, say no. <laughs> a point of clarification, we've got a credit we have to use up. So we, we've got to do this at some point here. That's why I just want to say that table. my concern is not primarily COVID related. It's more fire hazard related because of the drought that we're having. And I would want the input of the fire wardens of the area to see how they feel about that. I know mm -hmm. that the state is kind of advising that burning be kept to a minimal at the time, or I'd have been boiling sap in the dooryard already. So it's really um, a fire related issue more so than anything for me. Yeah. Right. And so that would be on Memorial Day, which is a little earlier than. Hmm. It's ways out. To decide so, tonight. And a lot could change between now and Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. We could get a deluge. So we could. So um, if if that's our only concern, I mean, personally, my COVID concern is not very high because it's an outdoor thing. People can separate mask, whatever, right? Um, and it's outdoors, which is a, excellent ventilation. Um, <laughs> I know. Love people love their fireworks in this town. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I guess I would say. What if we said, yeah, let's go ahead unless um, there's a there's a fire, uh, what you call it, uh, with a red flag warning that they issue when it's. Yes, I would I would agree with that. OK, we can do that. Sounds like board generally agrees to go ahead with the uh, fireworks as scheduled unless there's a red flag warning for fire and we could, you know, and we already have a thing in there about a rain date, so. Casey had updated you all too that we're just getting our logistics in order with Hazen as well. So that's another thing that we'll just make sure they're comfortable with the shoot. So that'd be a right. check, check in balance, if you will. Yep, yep. So it may, yeah. So there's still points at which it could not happen if Hazen didn't want to do it or whatever. But yeah, we're, yeah. you know, to Michael's point, obviously if we get a red flag or a fire hazard, we're not doing the shoot. That's, you know, it's a very good point, obviously. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, is that good enough for you, Sean, for that? Yeah, it is. Yep. Okay, good. Um, next up is board to discuss and review any updates provided by VLCT on hiring a new pound manager. Um, I have, I don't have any updates from um, Abby at VLCT, but um, I have talked to John Jewett. Um, we have general um, understanding on some terms. Um, I emailed him a draft contract. Just, I was a little slow. I did it yesterday, the day before, yesterday, I guess. So when I get that back from him, then I'll send it to the board um, and we can go from there. Okay. That's my update. So next is, um, item seven, select board to review contractor for the public service building and Hardwick Depot roof replacement and authorized town manager to enter into contract. And we have a couple, we had two bids it looks like that were um, opened. Um, any reason not to go with the low bid? 
That's our, that's a town manager's office recommendation. I would absolutely agree. I looked into both of the companies and I think that the low bidder is definitely qualified for the job. And as the low bid, I mean, that not that kind of how it works? Yeah, unless, you, unless we have some reason. And can we just say the bidder names? Um, just read back the numbers. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, I'm on a small screen here. This might be a problem. Uh, so we had, uh, we'd received bids from uh, first bid set was from uh, Lairway Mountain Construction. Um, public safety building uh, price. Oh boy, sorry, I, gotta I got this, it. Folks. Okay, you're it I got it. So bid project is uh, public safety building with six feet of water shield is 23,000 even. And um, the depot with six feet of water shield up from the eaves is 22,400 and uh, plywood replacement is $60 a sheet. The second bid was Roof Deck LLC um, public safety building at 25,500 25, and depot at $27,120 and plywood at $130 a sheet, including labor. So, yeah, I'll just say that um, looks like it's nice when the bids come in fairly close like that and you feel like when there's a real outlier, you, you wonder. Like, did are you did you miss something and you specking it, or did are they bidding on different things? But it looks like pretty close. They're bidding on the same thing. Town manager's office recommends going with a low bid. And uh, Laraway Mountain is Michael Bean, who's done quite a bit of work for us at the townhouse. He did, oh, they did the interior painting, and they did oh, okay the, the stairs, and they've done a lot of the other. Um, projects that we've had just because yeah, he's consistent and he yeah he has a small crew I yeah he's you recommend him I do all right so you want to move that you want to move that we go with him with Laraway so moved second all right uh, all in favor please say aye aye all right excellent okay we'll take and steps thank- to uh, move forward and get the contract in place yeah so, oh, we didn't, uh, and shoot, we should have also said and to authorize the town manager to enter into the contract. contract. Can we, should I do a new motion or can we uh, just update the motion? Move that we authorize the town manager to enter into a contract with Laraway Mountain Construction for both uh, the public safety building and the um, depot uh, roof. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that's every one motion carries. So it'd be two independent motions, Amanda. Sorry about that. No worries. We could have been more organized. But yeah, thank you all. We are who we are. <laughs> um, so next, oh, hang on. I've got my thing over here. Uh, I've got number eight, which is the um, land sale from the town to the O'Briens over in East Hardwick. This is that very small parcel by the river. River, um, And last time, not last time, I think February 4th, with the select board um, authorized uh, or said we wanted to proceed with the sale and authorize the town manager to get started. Um, Sean now has a purchase and sale agreement drawn up and I think wants specific, the select board to specifically authorize him to sign that. Is that correct, Sean? Yeah, I don't know. After you pointed out the email this afternoon, Eric, I, maybe I didn't have to ask for this, but I just wanted to keep it moving forward. You know, Fine. So. Better to over document than under. Yeah, we had, uh, yep. So uh, Let me the, just jump in there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, make a motion that we authorize Sean to enter into a purchase and sale agreement. Is that the right wording for that? Yeah. Second the motion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, that's everybody. So motion carries. Um, All right, we'll, we'll keep the ball rolling on that one. Uh, that's just great. coming at us on that. Once we get signed off, we'll have a 30 day uh, notice period. Maine Davies is assisting us with that. Plan closing is uh, June 1st. Great. Thank you all. Yeah, that's great. Glad to keep that going. Um, all right. That 
is I think we're through all the items. Did I miss any? Because we did have to jump around there a little bit. Um, I think you're but, fine. Okay, so then select board reports. Anybody have any of those? I can just do a quick report that um, the townhouse is uh, is talking with the chamber players, and it looks like um, they're going to have they're going to do a short season that will be a little start and. Uh, July 22nd, and they'll have two performances in August that I don't remember the dates of, but, um, and there may be a couple of other things that happen at the townhouse, but it'll, the majority seems to be happening after the 4th of July, um, with the assumption that we'll just be in a better place all around, but we'll continue to um, follow all the CDC guidelines and all the governor's stuff for making sure that everything's safe. And we're gonna open the building still in June. We might have a couple of open houses or something like that where people can at least go in one at a time or something. I don't know, we haven't figured that part out yet. Great. I'd just like to mention something. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is the purview of the select board or the town or whomever, but I do notice that down at the community garden by the pavilion there, that the water uh, availability apparently is cut in half because of some piping issues. Is that the town's responsibility to do the plumbing and whatever needs to be done for those operational spigots down there? Or would that be Bethany Dunbar's realm? I would, I would guess the Center for Agricultural Economy, which is where Bethany works. Right. Um, yep, I would, I would start there we do supply the water to Atkins Field, Michael. But right. um, I, you, I was aware of that. Yeah, but I wasn't um, aware of who actually dealt with the underground piping or whatever else needed to be done to resolve that issue. I know the I've frost free spigots. People. Is that what you're referencing for the yes. frost free hydrants that the inf that infrastructure would be theirs. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, any new business old business. All right. Great. Well, we're a dwindling group here tonight anyway, aren't we? So um, that's it. I guess um, we adjourn until next time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Everybody have a good night. Good night.